Hey, this is Sean. In this tutorial, I'm going to show how to create a physics asset and have that physics asset drive a morph target. So what I'm doing is I've got this, what looks like a spring, but it's actually being driven by a physics asset and the spring itself is a morph uh, or it's coming out of Maya as a blend shape. So let me go over how to set that up. All right, so I've moved over into Maya and then I'm going to quickly explain how to set up a morph target. The way Maya discusses it, it's a blend shape. So I created two helixes and so I did, did shift right click. That allows you to create a helix. You can choose how thick you want it and then I'm going to scale this one up a bit and then I'll duplicate it and shrink one down. And then I'm going to freeze the transforms on both of those. So modify freeze transforms and then I'll select one shift select the other go to the animation tool set deform and blend shape. And that should create the, uh, the blend shape node. And so you can see as I scrub that blend shape node, the spring coils and gets bigger. And so uh, having done that, then it needs to, in order for it to come over in Unreal as a, uh, with a morph target, it needs to be a skeletal mesh. So um, I, I also added this additional um, cube on top um, but in order to add the skeletal mesh, I just went into the uh, the rigging tool set. I created a skeleton uh, a skeleton joint, and I I bound it to the joint, uh, and then uh, when you when you have it bound, then you can export. You all you need to do is export this uh, this one object. So file uh, export selection. And then in the FBX options, you are going to want to make sure that you have uh, under deformed models, uh, you have the blend shape checked. So as long as you've got it bound as a skeletal mesh and, and blend shapes, that will come into Unreal. All right, so let's go back into Unreal. All right, so I'm back in Unreal, and then I'm going to quickly show that if you import the FBX that you exported from Maya, the key things to look for is that it's a skeletal mesh. And then in addition to that, you want to make sure that the import morph targets is turned on. All right. So then when you import that, you'll get a, if you hover over this, you'll see it's a skeletal mesh. You'll get a physics asset with it. And then you've also got the skeletal asset. So if you, if you click on the um, skeletal mesh, what you'll see is you'll see the skeletal mesh that comes in and you can see it, you should be able to see your your morph target um, and you can the the another important thing that's noticed that, that you can see is that you can overdrive the morph target so you're like i'm i'm like really um, pushing it um, to beyond one so you can go like one point five in there's a point where it'll break obviously so i just broke it um, but um, you can t probably like push it to 1.1 1 .1, it'll squish down um, and then in the the opposite case uh, i was going you can like overdrive it pretty well so which is pretty great so now that i've got that in um, you can also um, what i did was um, i also renamed the um, the morph target name, which is kind of good. That helps a little bit. I put the materials on the object, and then you need to know the uh, the morph target's name. And once you've got that all set up, you can set up the you can set up the interaction. So what I did next was you just type physics, and then there's the physics constraint actor. So I've got one of those in the scene. And then also I had a cube that was the reference object. So I have the physics actor and the cube reference. And then let me just turn off this snapping here for a second. Let 
All right. So then the next step is setting up the constraint. So I've got the physics actor. I'm going to select the object that I'm going to constrain. And you're going to want to make sure that you line up the constraint so it's a, you get a straight up and down um, line here. That may take a little bit of a while if you haven't got those. That's why having snapping turned on kind of helps. All right, so once you've got that set up, then in addition, you're going to want to scroll down and you're going to want to set some limits. So if you could just, I'm going to double click on here, just click on here, scroll down, and you can see um, the physics constraint actor, and you can see the setup that I've got. Here is I've selected the constraint actor, uh, and then under here I've got the Z motion set to limited. Um, that just, that limits how far the spring can go up and down. And then under the linear motor, I've got that uh, turned on in the Z, and then I've got a Z strength set to 125. And that's it uh, for the, the physics constraint. And so what I do, so I have this, this uh, cube, and this cube is going to drive the morph target. So the height of the cube, whenever the, the cube moves up to a certain height, and I know that the... I know the kind of maximum height that I'm going to get, and then that's going to drive the amount of the morph target. And uh, I messed around with values. Um, you could kind of, if you wanted to, you could kind of normalize it. That might be easier. But I liked the idea of overdriving a little bit. So let me just show my setup here. This spring asset that I brought in, and then I, so I created a reference to the spring. So right click, create a reference to the spring, drag off the reference, and you can just go to the set morph target, and that'll um, create the nodes that you need. And the specific things that you're going to want to plug in is you're going to want to plug in the name of the morph target, in which case my name was spring height. The one that I just brought in had just a weird... Uh, Let's see, it had the weird name that was just set in from Maya, which was like P cube four. So whatever, you can rename it and uh, you'll be able to get the morph working. Okay, so once you have that going, then, then you specify the value, right? And the value then is driven by this the cube that's moving around, which is driven from the uh, the physics asset. So I dragged off of the, the cube, so this cube here, and the cube itself, let's scroll up, the cube itself has to be set to movable, it has simulate physics, and then it's constrained to the physics actor information. So let me bring this over here. So. Right click, create a reference to the cube, get the relative transform information, and then I'm just getting the Z information, and I'm clamping it because I don't want it to go beyond a certain value. So I'm doing some math based on this. So the the I, I, and I'm, these are the values that I played with based on the height of the cube itself, and then at the end of the day. I'm clamping it between a minimum of zero and a maximum of 1.4, and that's going to drive the morph target. So no matter how high the um, that cube goes up and down, that will set my morph target. And that's pretty much it. You, the whole system I'm attaching to a tick, which from efficiency standpoints is never that efficient. So you want to be careful how often you use ticks. But uh, for a an effect that you... Um, and then you should turn it off, like when you want to, um, if you're not going to be near any of these springs, you know, you make sure that the tick has Booleans set into it so it's not evaluating consistently. All right. Uh, finally, I guess the other thing is if you wanted to add some sort of jump pad, uh, there's a lot of jump pad tutorials, but it's pretty simple. You just um, set up, you can create a, 
uh, set up so it affects the actor. You talk to the player pawn, and then it launches the character. But that's pretty much it. Uh, awesome. Let's just take a look at it at the end again. Um, I have it all set up too. Oh, I guess the final thing that I did, I'll show that as well, is um, I have the physics constraint actor, and then I'm uh, grabbing the physics constraint, and based on a flip-flop bound to the P key, I have a, I'm setting the linear position target. And the linear position target then, it will drive it'll either drive the, the spring down to its like compressed state or it will let it expand to, to a larger value. So here we go. So if I uh, go up, hit, I hit the P key, it compresses, I hit the pre key and then it, it frees it to bounce within a certain constraint amount. Awesome. All right, well, hopefully that's uh, inspirational. You can do some really fun things where different objects drive morphs in Unreal.